What the hell is this? Streamer Hunger Games? You are watching Math Feats Episode 14. I'm gonna make a video for each anime this season. You're watching 14. Okay, so I just finished watching episode one of Naka no Hito Genome or GQ Chu or and in English the ones within and I gotta say it was pretty good You know, um, it wasn't bad. I enjoyed uh, a certain amount of it. Um, this is a good season, dude So this show is available. You can watch it on anime lab, which I think is just a streaming platform for Australia and New Zealand and Funimation and Hulu. Funimation and Hulu. So how the show basically, what the show is about is basically a bunch of live streamers have, who have all played specific game, have all been basically kidnapped. Like they got an email and they said, we're going to pick you up. But they also said, congrats. They all got an email that basically said, congratulations, you have been selected to join join a spe or like unlock extra content or something and don't worry there's no you can't there's no declining this and there's no there's no like transferring it to anybody and they said don't worry we're coming to pick you up and basically everyone everyone got an email that said that and then like our main character who apparently has a pollen allergy he sneezed and then all of a sudden he was just already kidnapped and I don't know if that's what happened to everybody, if everybody sneezed and that happened or whatever, but they all basically just ended up with him. He ended up right next to this girl who's basically pink hair, generic tsundere girl, and of course she is. But whatever, you know, um, basically she already accuses him of being a pervert. So, you know, um, already setting the bar pretty high with this show. But basically what ends up happening is that they see a giant panda bear and like, a minute before, like literally a minute before they see a panda panda bear, he's like, oh man, we gotta, we gotta find, we gotta find out what's going on because it could get dark. They basically end up in the woods, but he's like, oh, we could get dark and then we could run into a bear. And then right as soon as he says that, a fucking huge Jimungus panda bear appears and he's just walking towards them and they start running because he sneezes because he's allergic to all pollens. And so they're running and shit, you know. At, at one point, they see a dude who has a sword and he just like kills a huge rat by slicing it. And then that's when main character dude's like, oh shit, I forgot about my superpower. And basically he just climbs up on a tree and he just starts talking to the panda bear. And uh, the panda bear doesn't kill him or anything, even though it seems like it was going to. Like, you know, it was just like, it was a... Uh, it was like, you know, the show's like, oh, are we going to do it? Are we going to kill him? Are we going to chop his head off right here? You know, but but basically he doesn't. And that's when the moderator's like, wow, you guys passed this test already or passed the first challenge. And he tells them that he's that he's never seen anybody befriend a bear before. And basically what this is, is like I said, they're all live streamers. And so he has abducted all these live streamers and they're going to play games and they only have one goal, one purpose. And that purpose is that there's a number that's basically been on all of their arms that's been put on all their arms. And apparently it's like a nano chip that changes and like goes up and down. And the guy said that that number is your amount of viewers and your goal is to reach 100 million viewers. And he doesn't say what happens afterwards. He just says that he just says that and uh, basically they keep going on I think th then there's like a commercial break and they cut but you know basic and then all of a sudden they're all in a classroom and everyone is like introducing themselves and the viewers are going up and shit they're all different kinds of streamers like one of them is a nurturing streamer our main character is a streamer I forgot what the fuck he played but you know a lot of people played a lot of shit pink hair girl plays horror games but apparently she's actually afraid of horror things and so you know at one point at one point he tells them that there's this room where like he he has not threatened to kill anybody but he did say that apparently those are possible in this world they said that this is a game with since it's real content that means real life shit can happen as in you know death and injury and shit so because they all like tackle him like 
as soon as he mentions that there was somebody that if if you keep basically bothering people or like being annoying and asking a bunch of questions he's going to put you in a white room where you're just gonna sit in there and wait for everyone to accomplish the to pass and basically he tells the story of a dude who basically ended up in there because he was asking a lot of questions and he never knew that his team failed and so he just stayed in there till he died i guess the guy gives him food because that's the only thing i was thinking about is like is it a room where you just you just die from not eating or is it like you know he gives you food and you just fucking sit there either way you know that guy you see him turn into like skeleton or into bones and it's pretty it's pretty epic Oh yeah, pink hair girl's name is Karen. Our main character's name is Akatsuki and the nurturing streamer who is not, who's barely in this episode. His name is Himiko. I just remembered that because she was like the only one that I thought had the best design. The character designs, they're like, some of them stand out. None of them look too like familiar or anything. Like there's no character that I'd say that they're ripping off or like that looks like similar visually to any of the characters in this cast. Although like maybe the guy in the back who's basically just Tanaka-kun and he's like a, a sleeping streamer or something. But yeah, you know, the character designs, they're serviceable. They're not, they're not bad or anything. Backgrounds in the show is uh, just as uh, generic as every other show. Feels bad, man. So the admin is basically some weird wacky guy who is like in a llama mask. And I like his attitude. He seems kind of cool. You know, he's he's silly. You know, he's, he's at least slapstick. He, he, he's giving me Koro Sensei vibes. You know, he's, he's, he's feeling like Koro Sensei, even if you may not end up like Koro Sensei. Apparently he's like a fan of all, uh, at least some of the streamers because he tells the the nurturing streamer Himiko that he is actually a real big fan of her soft spoken streams and he he asked her to say to him something. Fuck, I forgot what it. Was. It's super funny how he like tells her that he's a big fan because like they do the like fog the fog effect whenever he's like <sighs> like they're heavy like he's heavy breathing and like it's really good. It's really good. I thought that was well done. Her her design is really good too even though it's kind of odd like she just has these huge goggles and like a weird scarf thing around her a weird yellow scarf so it is out of it's 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 kind of random their designs but like you know i mean i think it works it's fa it's fair enough you know but he basically says could you whisper something to me to himiko and he says i love mr paka he says can you whisper that into my ear and then some character throws something at him but uh basically He's a, he's a real spooky boy. You don't really know about him. He's mysterious. He has a llama head. I wish I had a llama head. What happens after they all do basically in the class, they all do their introductions is they pick the second task or the second game and, or they don't pick it, but he just tells them what it is and says that four people are part of it. Our main character, Akatsuki, he actually just says that he wants to volunteer for this. And so he just volunteers for that. And I guess he's just one of the four now. And so basically what the game is, is, is like playing on a Ouija board and they're talking to a spirit. And I guess they have to do the thing that the spirit tells them to do. So like the spirit asks for water. And so they pour out water from a vase onto it. And then the spirit asks for, I don't know, some other shit. Or I don't know, I guess they cut and decide. I don't know, they don't show it. But then they, sh then they show like the last thing that they have to do. And she says that she wants Akatsuki. And he starts being pulled from something out the window or from something. And he starts being pulled out towards the window. And then he's like up on the window and then he like falls off. And then it's just like, oh shit, is he dead? Oh no, what the fuck? And then uh, apparently, you know, Big Panda, bro, who he made friends with earlier, just, uh, you know, was there chilling and he just like, you know, saves him from falling to his death, I guess, because I guess they're high up in the school building, whatever, wherever the fuck they are. They don't have phones or anything. But basically then before he fell, he actually said that there's somebody behind one of the guys, the guy with the mask. And I think they like looked back or whatever, but saw nobody and you know, he fell. And so, you know, after he's back inside of the classroom because Panda bro just helped him out, what happens is he says, yeah, there's somebody behind you. And he points to this girl who wasn't there before. And she's like a ghost and has like black skin, like black charred skin, basically, and white hair. And he goes to her and is like, I'll be your friend. And, you know, it's just like, she's like, 
then she's like, will you be my friend? And he says, yeah, I'll be your friend. And she's like, okay, then come and burn with me. And she starts like turning on fire and like there's fire in the classroom and he just doesn't do anything. He's just like, yeah, I'll be your friend, but I can't go with you now, right? And so I'm at that point, I'm just like, okay, this guy, is he just gonna get through this? And so they're all like, all backing up, dude, it's fire, what are you doing, you idiot? And he's just like talking to the girl and uh, you know, like holding her and shit while he's burning, I guess. Or maybe he's not burning, I don't know. But basically she says like, okay or something. And she disappears and we go to, I don't know, maybe the next day. And he has bandages on his arms. So I suppose, yeah, I guess he has been burned. And you know, everyone's okay. They're all in like a cafeteria getting food. He told a guy that he would eat all of his peppers. And so he, a guy was pouring out a bunch of peppers for him. Uh, it's pretty interesting. He, 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 he said that he, uh, before the, the ghost girl died or disappeared, he said that he has never broken a promise and that he promises that he'll come back to be with her forever, right? Or something. And then like, you know, they go to the cafeteria and at the end of, or well, after I finished watching that episode, I searched up the manga and I think it's actually a, a webcomic, but you know, it's, it's on like a bunch of manga sites anyway. So I went there and I looked at it and basically there was another part. I was just, I was just flipping through it cause I didn't really, I just wanted to see where it was. And I was just, you know, I went to the chapter where this episode ended, which is like chapter three. And basically there's one scene that, or there's a part that they cut out that I thought was pretty interesting, which was that one of the girl, maybe it's going to be next episode. But one of the girls asked, or somebody asked him, hey, didn't you say that? Didn't you say something to that that girl? To which, to at what point, Akatsuki, our main character, says, I've already forgotten what I said to her. <laughs> which I thought was pretty funny. Here it is on screen. Um, I respect him for already forgetting Ghost Girl. Even though he literally got burns from her. That was pretty funny. I've already forgotten my dude. I don't even know what she was. I wasn't even listening to her. Was she saying shit? I didn't care. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was funny. But like, yeah, this guy so far, he has just beat everything with friendship. Like the reason why I actually went to go look up the manga or what light or what light novel or webcomic is that since he was just beating everything with friendship, I'm just like, is, is this a shonen manga or something? What is this? Cause uh, he, he's just being everything with friendship. Is there gonna be death? Is someone gonna die? Cause I, cause I do want somebody to die. I think in anime, like before death happens, it doesn't really feel like there's that much, that there are that many stakes. Now, like I said, there is a point where, you know, I mean that room where you are in there for eternity if your friends don't accomplish their tasks. That seemed pretty cool. But like, you know, I, I mean, that that would basically be the same thing as somebody dying. So let's, so I'm just kind of hoping that we see somebody go in there at some point. Cause I think that would be pretty cool to just know that a character has been basically killed off screen or like is just here to sit in a room of nothingness. Wouldn't that be cool? Really what I want to see happen in the show sooner soon is I want to see Akatsuki, our main character, you know, crack. I want to see him snap. I want to see him go crazy. I think that would be interesting. I really hope that's what that's what's going to happen and that he's not just friendship, uh, that he's not just like, uh, friendships Mary Sue forever. Cause you know, I, th I think it would be real cool, dude. The director of this show, Shin Onuma, he actually is the same guy that directed Watamote, so that's pretty cool. Watamote is great. Go watch that, idiot. Yeah, man, I really want Akatsuki's spirit to get broken, man. I want him to get fucked up. I want him to, like, wouldn't it be cool if he, like, if, like, something has to happen and he has to like lose his eyes i think if he had to sacrifice a body part or something i think that would be really cool to blacken the character you know what i mean to really make him feel like fucked up or just to just to really show everybody what it's like i'm just trying to see where the stakes are in this show so far this guy has only really said that he'll put peppers in somebody's food so so i'm really trying to see what what mr llama he has really got up his sleeve you know math feats forever Anyway, the ED for the show was pretty good. I enjoyed it. You know, I mean, they basically just played the song. It didn't seem like that's the actual ED because it was just like still showing scenes of the show. So hopefully we'll see the e the actual ED sooner or later, but the singing was pretty nice. I enjoyed it. I think it played well. I think this is a pretty, pretty good, pretty good first episode. 
I think, you know, I'm intrigued. I want to know a bit more. I want to see where this show goes. Maybe I'm just going to read the manga because it just felt so easy going to just flipping through and seeing like everything already. So who knows? Anyway, guys, that's all I've got to say about Math Feats episode 14. Thank you for watching. This show has been Naka no Hito Genome, also known as The Ones Within. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that shit, and I'll see you guys next time.